When I'm 11 years old, my father tells me that the parking lot smells a lot like marijuana. To say that I'm scandalized would be an understatement. You see, I was the prude love child of my middle school's D.A.R.E. program, which means that I was taught from a very young age that the minute you consume drugs, you become a very, very bad person. So when my father insinuates that he knows the smell, I judge him to be an evil man and tell him to confess immediately or I'm running away from home. He laughs and says, the things you will never know about my past. I have never asked my father who he dated before my mother. I have never asked him about his first kiss. I do not know what he hoped his life would look like and whether or not that came true. You see, there's a thing that happens when you call someone a father. He ceases to become a person and instead becomes a punchline for everything that you hate about yourself. He becomes a parable, as if on that day, two new people are born. Everything he is in this moment is now history, his story. There's this thing that happens when you are trans, when you know you are not a man because you know you are not your father's son. And the moment you tell him this, he becomes everything you are running away from. So in this way, being trans is another way of saying, I'm running away from home. I have never asked my father what it felt like to become history, to watch 30 years of memory coil inside of his gut so that every time he laughed he could remember what it felt like to be young again. There's a VCR tape in the living room drawer. Fast forward to the scene where a man who would have looked like me if I hadn't have run away from my father walks out next to a woman radiant enough to be the sunshine when I first opened my eyes. This is my parents' wedding video. In this shot, my father's best friend tells him that he can no longer be a rebel now that he's a married man. This is how I discover that my father used to be a rebel. When I meet his friends from college, they tell me that he spent most of his time hanging out with a man named Karl Marx and a dream of a decolonized India. They tell me I look just like him. And I want to say, no, I'm not a man. I mean, I'm not that man. My father laughs at me in this video. The same way he will laugh 15 years later in a parking lot. The same way he laughs when I'm back home and use words like revolution and now, and he tells me that he believes in incremental change. So, of course, I accuse him of being a middle-class liberal who's come to care more about his private property than he has his people, and he tells me that there's this thing that happens when you grow older, when you begin to recognize that you are no longer invincible, which is, I think, my father's way of finally admitting that he was never invincible that his hands were so sweaty from being afraid of all of the ways that I began to look just like him that he could never quite hold on to me, which is, I think, my father's way of finally admitting there are things I had to give up in order to have you. I gained the confidence to yell on the streets because I learned early on how to fight my father. I have been shouting at him for the past six years and calling it a relationship instead of a riot because maybe that's my way of convincing myself that I see myself in the flames. And maybe that makes all the difference.